Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Jacqueline and thank you so much for joining me on my jungle story. Today I'm going to be bringing you along on a very sad journey. Actually it makes me kind of sad making this video because it's not, it's not what you want to be doing as a plant parent but it comes, it comes with it unfortunately. I have the biggest thrip infestation I have ever had in my four years of collecting houseplants. I don't know how it got so bad. It can obviously go from one to a hundred with thrips because they don't need, you only need one and that's Pretty much it you're pretty much doomed and i'm pretty sure that i saw a thrip was it maybe four weeks ago and i just squished it with my finger and i kind of ignored the problem and before i knew it i have thrips on almost every single one of my plants i even have thrips in my small little um akaba ikea greenhouse with all my water propagations, even they have thrips. It just makes me so sad because it's, it's the one, th I just I hate dealing with it. I hate dealing with bugs. And when you have so many plants so close together in such a small area, it's just, yeah, it's, it's hell, it's horrible. I have been actually doing this process for the past three days because I don't want to be using the product that I'm using when my kids are in the same room. So I obviously have to do this while they're sleeping or while I don't have them, which is only two days in the week. And if you postpone this, which I have done, it just, it gets worse, worse and worse. With thrips, it's like an overnight thing where one day you will look at a plant It'll be perfectly fine and the next day it'll already have damage and there will already be like 10 thrips on there. Anyway, I'm going to start off with saying what I'm going to be using to treat them. I'm also going to be explaining a couple of things to prevent thrips, which I know kind of sounds like, well, that's ironic considering you have a big infestation. But I, this is, like I said, this is only the second time that it's, no, I didn't say this. I didn't say this. No, this is the biggest thrip infestation that I've ever had. But this is only the second time in those four years that I've had to use a product like this. That I've had to use a, you know, the strong stuff. Not the, not the gentle approach. Let's put it that way. So, yeah. But I have used this product before in the past. Because it did, it's like it's it's um it's the one that you've got to mix with water. So one little thing you can it lasts you a very very long time. But thrips has been the most difficult one that I've ever dealt with. So yeah, let's just get into it. So this is the product that I'm going to be using. This is KB Multi Sect that I'm using. I've had this honestly for years because it is one of those ones that you've got to mix with water because it's quite a, it's a concentrated version and it does work pretty well. It's not one that I would advise because it's not as soon as you look at the back and it's got like that little that little sign there, you know that it's not you know it's the it's the bad stuff. <laughs> but it is the stuff that works, so that's why I'm going to be using this now. I'm not going to go for the gentle approach because it's just, it's not going to work. It's, it's, it's really, really bad. When I come across a plant. No, you can't see. You can't see. They were all basically in here. And you can see like a lot of the damage actually. That's all damage from, from, and also like it's just gone a little bit of a different color at the bottom. And if you, yeah, it's just not really, not looking its best. So basically the thrips, thrips don't need, if you have one, they can breed on their own. They don't need, you don't need multiple. 
and if you have like this there's the um, i believe that the juvenile form is like a paley like almost yellowy color and then the adult form of thrips they are black or brown or yeah they're, they're very very obvious however with leaves that have dark that are dark colored it is a lot diff more difficult to see them but usually you you will be able to spot them and actually the way that i noticed them now this time was it is my, all my plants are due to be watered and that's kind of how how i how i could tell the first plant that i saw it on really really badly was one of mitch's plants the monstera adansonia i was actually cleaning the terrace with the pressure cleaner outside and we've moved that plant right up to the window and I was right there pressure cleaning and I looked over and I all of a sudden this the, she was full of thrips she was full and at first I thought is that because she's right by the window because they thrips can obviously fly so is it because it's getting warmer now and I'm opening windows more that I've gotten thrips that could be reason one reason two could be that the beginning of February I went back to work and I work with plants so I could have quite have easily brought bugs home with me and reason number three yeah no there's four reasons that i think it could be reason number three could be um that i've ordered i've purchased a lot of plants in the last month well not a lot of plants but i have purchased plants and i've also rescued plants so and rescue plants usually are a little bit fragile so they could have been bugs with them and reason number four the last reason i think it could have also been that I have not been on top of cleaning the leaves of my plants and I'm usually pretty on top of that but I haven't been ever since I've been back to work it's kind of been difficult being on top of that just because I, 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 I would usually do something like that at night and I've not been I've not been doing that because after a day's work I'm, I'm exhausted so that could be reason number four so those are I think three possible reasons that it could be now, obviously, ways to prevent that is in the future when I come home, instead of coming into this area with my work clothes, I go straight upstairs and I change my clothes. Another thing that I could do to prevent that is try and make myself a schedule with cleaning my plants, cleaning the leaves. And when I say that, I mean, I literally, I have this little, this little bowl. I just, I just use dishwashing soap to be honest I don't use like plant soap or anything it's worked for me for years and not really had a problem with it or anything yeah I just put it like but it's a tiny bit as well and then I just have a cloth or a sponge and I just wipe all of my leaves down I used to do that I used to actually continuously do this and every single night I would do a little bit so that it wouldn't really seem like a big job and write down what I've done because I do forget so yeah that's another thing that I could do another thing that I could do is obviously with the temperatures going up now that we're going into spring I do open the windows more like I, I love I love having my windows open I love you know breathing fresh air especially when I'm when it's like a rainy day and you can't really go outside like right now it's just it's, it's been raining all day but my windows are open. They, I mean, they are also open because I am doing this treatment. I'm not going to stop opening my windows. But I suppose that's just something I could do. Another thing that I could do is when I get new plants is just really try and quarantine them. I do try and do this. But the problem is, is that downstairs, this is all one area. And I don't have another area to, to put them in where they have lights to kind of quarantine them I, I can't I can't do that the only way I could do that is by putting them upstairs but when you purchase a new plant you don't want to go ahead and put that plant upstairs you want to have it in your main area where you are most of the time I think my major downfall was that four weeks ago that I saw that thrip and I just squished it with my finger and I should not have done that I shouldn't have done that I should have treated it and that'd be that but unfortunately now to be fair, I have, like, I've started on this side of the house and I have already done quite a lot. And, for example, all the plants behind me here, I didn't find any damage, any, any thrip, any indication. But they didn't really have 
pissed. I mean, I do have a lot of easy, I find that the Aglaonemas, they are so easy and they're so hardy. They're just, uh, if you've got pissed, they'll probably be the last one to get it. I'm not saying they're not going to get it, but they're just so hardy. But yeah, that side didn't really notice much of pests going on there. However, on right on the other side, my Schiffleria Melanie, her new growth was completely damaged. And yeah, she also had, but she was right next to the, um, the aloe that had, that was infested with rips. So I don't really know. I really don't know. I don't know really know what to do there they obviously you can do all these things to prevent them and they have worked because this is only this is my first big infestation so they obviously have worked but yeah i suppose when you have kids you do let you do drop the ball and you can't be on top of everything all the time so don't if you get if you do get bugs don't be harsh on yourself yes it sucks and yes this is a whole process that i've been doing for the past three days this will be the fourth day that i'm working on this and I've not even started on the other side of the room so yeah but I just want to go through some tips while I'm busy I'm obviously not going to show you every single plant because that will just be that video will be way too long but I'm going to show you what I do to treat them and also give you some tips on how to handle it so basically step one what I do is I bring so what I've done is I've cleared the this part of the kitchen island because I'm obviously going to be using products so I don't I don't want anything else to like clothes or anything to be in the area the only thing closest is more plants but I've actually already treated them so I've cleared this area I've brought over because I'm also going to water them at the same time because I don't want this product to like completely go into the soil and if your plant has already received water it won't suck up this this as much but I obviously do try and prevent contact with the soil as much as I can so yeah I bring them over first of all I give them water I give them a wipe down this is just like I said this is just dishwashing a liquid with a little bit of water and I wipe them down and then what I do after I've wiped them down is I go in with my product. So what I've done is, so I have the product. This is the concentrated version. You can get the one that's already in a spray bottle that you don't have to do anything. But I got the concentrated version and I have this separate cup thing. This was just where soup was in. I've even labeled it as well so that I know that when I'm mixing this product with water that I've done it at this, you do not want to do this in like your, you know, like Tupperware that you use for in the kitchen or whatever. I have, I actually have a set like this just for my plants so that I keep the two very, very separate. You don't want to mix the two. So yeah, I mix it in here and then I have this separate little spraying bottle that I've also labeled, really important <laughs> because I have a bunch of these. And I basically put it in here and then I spray it. While I'm doing this, I will leave this because there obviously will be like water residue on it. I will leave this to drip a little bit. Like I'll shake it a little bit. It'll drip. And then I put it back in the pots and put it back in its spot. However, this came from this area here. So what I did is I put all the plants on the island and then one by one, I treated them and I put them back. I also cleaned the wall and I cleaned the surface as well. You don't want any pests there. However, it depends on the product that you use. So this product, this isn't sponsored or anything because I, honestly, I don't, I don't recommend this product. It is, it is the strong stuff, but I just, I need to go for the strong route this time because it is, it is really, really bad. But this product, basically the plant absorbs like it sucks in this plant, this product, which sounds bad, I know, but it's not harmful to the plant at all. This would only be harmful if you were, for example, to use this outside. This is harm. This would be harmful to other bugs like ladybirds and all of that. This would be harmful to them if they were to then bite into the plant that you treated this with. They would, they would die. They would, yeah, they would die. 
but obviously inside that's not an issue you know i don't have lexi is not interested in the plants she doesn't bite at the plants my kids know not to go for the plants and also most of my plants are out of out of reach and Matteo, he knows not to touch the plants. He's just, he's, he is very good in that sense. So he knows not to touch them. Another thing. So yeah, I said that the plant absorbs. So, so that basically means that if there is any thrip or any other bug that bites into this plant or go onto this plant, after I've treated it, they will die. Now this what does it say it says results in 24 hours time it is for yeah it's for mewies thrips it's for quite a lot of different here it is so this is systemic yeah God. the more i'm reading about this the more i'm like oh. So this protects your plant for three weeks long and when I treat this I cover this thing so yeah not exactly the best thing okay what are you going to need when you need to do a pest treatment like this I would strongly advise gloves I do not have gloves I would strongly advise a mask I do not have a mask <laughs> and I would strongly advise opening all of your windows when you're using a harsh product like this. Now, even just talking about this, I feel I feel like itchy. So yeah, like I said, I do not have, I don't have gloves and I don't have a mask. Not good. However, there is no one else in the room with me right now. My kids are sleeping. So I've also made sure that the area around if I do get any of the product like on the floor and everything, I make sure that it's like that it's cleaned up before I even take them out of their bed. And I also obviously clean everything down because I'm sitting here. I think it's coming from this, but I can smell it. So I don't obviously want my kids around that. Ideally, you would want to be doing this outside. I do not have that option at the moment and they need to be treated. So do as i say not as i do okay I've, I've recommended two things that you should do that i'm not going to do but i am going to i have opened all of my windows so there is i hope that the sound is okay but there is ventilation going on and everything so yeah that is everything that you're going to need and i'm just going to show you on a couple of plants what i do with treating them and i hope that this helps you when you have to treat your plants Things like a mask and gloves. Have these things in your home before. Like if you do not have pests right now, go out and buy these things. Also do some research into the product. Do not do all of this once you have pests because you need to tackle it straight away. You need to go for it straight away. Do all of this beforehand. So ideally I would have liked to use another product. I don't have another option at the moment. But look these things up. Well, after you watch this video look, and you don't have pests, look these things up. Get gloves, get a mask, and get whatever treatment that you want to use. I really want to try like beneficial mats, but I need to do a little bit more research into it because I feel like on the internet you're kind of bombarded with all these different products, and I want to get the right thing. I want to, yeah, I want to just do a little bit more research on that. But yeah, go and look these things up. If I can give you any advice, do these things before you have pests. It'll save your butt. So, to the actual job itself. So I have my Diefenbachia reflector here. She doesn't have any signs of pests, nothing. So I'm just going to give her a really good clean. I usually actually take her upstairs and give her a shower but my kids are sleeping at the moment so I don't want to wake them up and this one also has like a bunch of in the leaf itself it has like these oh, like crevices so it's kind of it's really difficult to get in there but yeah the front and the back of your leaves really important something that in the beginning of me becoming like an actual collector of plants 
I only use to clean the parts that you can see, which is no good when you got pests because it's the back of the leaves and the stems as well, which is also something I never used to do. That's, that's where they're hard and get into all of the little bumps. And don't be afraid, but like don't, these are plants, these, yes, you have, yes, you might have, like, I've, when was I doing, I was doing one yesterday and I ripped the leaf. It happens. Don't worry about it. Just try, be thorough, because you do not want, you do not want to have to do this again in three weeks time. Is that it? No, that's dirt. I'm so paranoid now. And honestly, I'm also actually kind of paranoid about new plants that I buy. Because I do not have... I do not have the room to quarantine them, so... Maybe when we renovate our attic or roof, whatever it's called. Um, I do want to make that into, that's going to become our bedroom. So I do want to make that into like a, a plant haven. But maybe I should use that for quarantining plants. Also another really important thing, I know that maybe to me that kind of sounds like, well, duh, is rinsing out your sponge or whatever as much as you can. Not doing, not doing like a whole plant and not rinsing it out. Okay, she's already had water, she's already dripped up. Another thing, do not reuse the water that's in here. Um, you don't want to, you just don't want to risk it. If there are any in the soil, you don't want to set that onto other plants, like plants that you're not 100% sure if they do have bugs or not. You don't want to be, you know, watering them with infected, with water from a plant that had the bugs. Okay, so I have my products. Like I said, Get gloves because I do I mean I do have really really sensitive skin but when it gets on my hands it does sting a little bit and yeah obviously the smell is not it doesn't really have a smell but like you can smell that it's like chemically you know so then I just give it a good spray now I don't know if you're gonna be able to see but it is obviously dripping a little bit so what I do is I just tap the points of the leaves a little bit. And this does also actually, um, is there an example? Yeah, you're not gonna be able to tell though, but I, I just did it on my um, Monstera. And you can kind of see that it's got like a film on it. It doesn't like change the, it's not like a white film or anything, but you can see that there is a product on there. It's kind of like when you use, if you, for example, would use water and you would spray your plants and there would be like a lot of, um, what is it? What is caulk in English? Wow. Don't know what that word is in English. Anyway, it leaves like a white film on it. It's kind of like that, but it's not white. And you can only really, like right now looking at it, you cannot see anything but in the lights you can see a little bit of like a shimmer and then you yeah that's just from the product and it does dry up very very quickly it's kind of you can actually see the plant sucking in the product oh yeah you can probably tell where i put it, it was down there i am very very lucky with the fact that my son does not he doesn't really show a lot of interest and touching the plants. I think it was one time that he ripped plants and uh, the way that I reacted, like with just my facial expression, I didn't actually say anything to him. He was kind of like, oh no, that's that's not good. 
And ever since that, I actually never said anything to him. I just explained to him, you know, if you, you know, we don't pull up the plants or anything, you can touch the plants, but we don't pull at them. He's not really, he's not really interested in them. I mean, there's a, an alocasia black velvet literally right next to his little kitchen that he has. And it's like, <laughs> it's right there. It's on his level. He doesn't even, it doesn't even phase him. So it's obviously perks of having so many plants. He's just used to it by now. My plants are actually not as dirty as I thought they would be. Look at those roots. <laughs> wow. I'm really, really surprised at how well my Marantas have taken to pond. And how easy it is now to have a Maranta. I always had such bad luck with them. And now it's just such an easy plant for me. It's like, what? This one's also not showing any signs, any damage or anything. But most of my affected plants were actually by the window, which is why I thought that it was because of I started opening the window more. If any of you guys have pests or have had a huge infestation, let me know what you did because I feel like there's so many different ways to, to tackle pests nowadays. Like there's so many different products and so many different things you can do. Let me know how you did it. My Pothos Neon, someone commented and said it could be flat mites. Now I've never heard of flat mites before and I started doing a little bit of research and obviously you can't, you can't see them and this and that. So it's definitely one that I'm keeping my eye on because if that is the answer, it is completely different to what I thought I was doing wrong with that plant. And there are obviously plants that you will, that are more susceptible to pests, like for example, my which one is it that almost all the time gets syngonium oh my word syngonium i've had the worst of luck with them they just get pests all of the time i don't know if it's something that i'm doing i don't know if it's the soil that they're in they always have always have pests maybe it's just that i've had bad luck because usually in the garden center they already have them what I've noticed from when they come, when we order them and they come in. I know it must kind of seem pointless of me treating plants that I don't see anything on, but something as invasive as thrips, I'm not gonna take the chance. I know that this product is not going to, yes, this is strong stuff, but I know it's not going to damage the plant. It's not harmful to the plant itself. So, I'm not worried about that, but I just don't want to, I don't want to risk it. I really don't want to risk it. I don't want to have an even bigger outbreak just because I only did the plants that I can see them on. I've done that before in the past and yes, it's worked for me and it's not a problem, but this is a really bad one. I'm just going to get on with it. I'll bring a couple of plants over that you can see, like for example, hanging plants. Um, I just take them upstairs into the shower and I just shower them down. I don't go through every single teeny tiny leaf. If, if it's like a hanging pot that has a lot of small leaves, I don't do that. I just rinse them off. But I do rinse them off. So it would be best if you were to do this that you could wait until the plant needs water if not you can always use like plastic or whatever to anything that can basically stop water from getting in the pot you can also do that i have done that before with plants that are really really bad usually what i would do if it's one plant and i know like the last time i had to do a treatment like this a couple of i think it was about two months later i had a plant that was quite separate, like it, it was on its own. It didn't have any other plants around it, in the same room, yes, but not like surrounding or around it or in the same area. And I saw that that plant had bugs and I straight away took that plant upstairs into the bathroom, don't have any plants in my bathroom at the, at the time. And I completely rinsed it off. I used 
again I just used dishwashing liquid to clean it off and then I went in with the product and I didn't have it on any of my other plants if you do notice this with other plants obviously separated what I did this time is I found I was watering and I found thrips on one plant I carried on watering and I put that plant to a side but then I saw the plant just maybe like a meter a meter away from it that one also had thrips and then I just stopped watering and I started walking around and I started to see that there were there was damage on leaves on some leaves where I didn't see any bugs or thrips but still damage which means they're still there it's not because you can't see them that they don't have them and then I made the decision that I need to yeah I need to treat all of my plants which is sad but honestly they are going to get a good treatment now and yeah it just it happens you know it's, it's it's a part of it I've given I've hopefully given you some advice when you have bugs thrips are honestly the worst form I've not I've never had mealies touch wood is this real wood yes it is real wood yes touch wood <laughs> I have not had mealies I've seen them at work and the days that I've seen them at work I come home those clothes that I'm wearing I actually wash them straight away but that's unfortunately part of the job anyway if you enjoyed this video if you enjoyed this video if you enjoyed me expressing myself about my bug issue that I have at the moment please give it a like subscribe to my channel yeah leave a comment down below if what you've done if you have if you have bugs at the moment or what you have done when you've had an infestation of thrips or spider mites or whatever i would love to hear from you guys because the internet says one thing i just feel like it's worth a lot more coming from people who also have collections and are also plant parents like me i hope that this helped you i hope that you got some tips out of this or if any of this was useful and yeah I will see you in the next video and wish me luck <laughs> I hope that I can keep this at bay I will obviously keep you guys updated because this is um, a massive saw in my collection at the moment right at the beginning of growing season which sucks but you gotta get on with it I'm not this is my first this is my first season, growing season, that I'm going into, in two years time, that I'm not pregnant. So I'm not going to go for a burnout. I'm not going to let hormones take over. I need to get on with it and I need to save my plants. Because last year I started getting bugs and I just threw that plant away. If I saw pests on that plant, I threw it away. Yeah, that was it was a very deep, it was a very deep burnout, I'll put it that way. But that's due to hormones. Anyway. I will see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye.